Mari is a co-owner of Breathe Yoga and Pilates Studio in Trim, and you will be able to just feel her depth of practice. So please enjoy the session of Gentle Vinyasa Flow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aparna. Can, uh, can you hear me and see me all right? Just can I, because I can't actually, no. Um, yes, we can hear you perfectly fine, Mar Mari. Yeah. What I'm trying to do, apparently, is I, I want the layout so I can see you on the small, yeah, I have the sidebar screen, but I can't. Um, so I if, can you, I, if, if you I just can, click the three dots at the bottom of the screen and you can change the layout. Yeah, no, I have the layout, but I'm only seeing you on the big screen. Um, so unpin me, maybe you have me pinned. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, now you're pinned. <laughs> Uh, I'll go back to the um, the full tiled uh, layout, maybe. But it's just I just want to make sure everybody can see me okay on the on the tiled layout when I yeah. step back to the mat. Perfect, and I can. Is that see okay? Me. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Ah, great. So we're getting the natural light now. I was worried that the light wasn't going to be there. That's great. Okay, you're. Thank you so much for inviting me to participate uh, in this wonderful day for uh, the International uh, Day of Yoga. We're going to do a gentle practice, so I'll ask you to have maybe cushions, uh, blankets, uh, just things to make your practice more comfortable. If anything doesn't feel right for you, please don't do it. No, no forcing or no effort. It's a gentle practice. So only work with what feels right for you in your body. So we're actually going to start in Balasana, child's pose. So if you have any knee issues, you might like to place a folded blanket beneath the knees. Sometimes it's nice to have cushions maybe underneath the arms, or even if it's uncomfortable to sit back on the heels, you might like to place a cushion between the hips and the heels. So I'll give you a few options for, for each position that we're going to work through. So you might like to take the knees apart if that's more comfortable for you, rest down on the forearms using a cushion or directly on the mat, or maybe stacking the fists or the hands and resting the forehead on the stacked hands. If it's not accessible to take the hips back to the heels, feel free to stack the hips above the knees and maybe bring the arms up a little higher. So finding your version of the last minute child's pose that works best for you. Settle into the pose and bring the awareness inwards now, focusing on the breath. Noticing your inhale. Noticing your exhale. Gradually slow down the breath. Drawing it deep within and feeling that expansion of the ribs and the belly on the inhale. The softening and releasing on the exhale. And consciously shutting out the outside world now and Bringing the awareness inwards, finding that union between mind and body, as we've just heard about earlier, and being present in the here and now, right here on your mat. Inhaling deeply, exhaling slowly. Notice that expansion into the back and sides of the ribs now as we expand into the back body on the inhale. And allow them to relax and soften down on the exhale. Inhaling deeply. Exhaling slowly. And continue for a few more rounds now in your own time. And just using my voice as a guide. Inhaling and exhaling at your own pace. Maybe bring your awareness now to that little pause or that transition point at either end of the inhale and the exhale. No need to hold the breath, just observe that transition. Inhaling deeply, pause. Exhaling slowly, pause. 
and allow the inhale to return. Just take a few more rounds of this slow, focused breath, noticing that pause at either end of the inhale and the exhale in your own time. Notice the calming, soothing effect of slowing the breath and focusing inwards and taking this special time out just for you. On the next inhale, you can let go of that practice for now and just slowly lift the head. Take your time in case of any dizziness or lightheadedness and ease your way up to an all four or tabletop position. So you might still need that blanket or extra support underneath the knees. You can move the cushions out to one side if you have them. Spread the fingers wide, placing the hands directly below the shoulders or slightly wider if there's any um, tightness in the shoulders. Knees below the hips and the feet pointing back. And just checking in how the wrists are feeling. Maybe if there's anything going on with the wrist, you might prefer to have fit the fists on the mat. Or you can change at any stage, maybe folding up the mat to get a more gentle slope underneath the palms of the hands for more comfort, depending on how your wrists are feeling today. So we'll take a gentle little rock from side to side and just notice how that feels for you in your wrists, in your shoulders, in your knees and hips, and just honoring any little areas of tightness or tension or little niggles that you might have going on. Be aware of that and mind them throughout our practice today. Bring a gentle little tone to the belly as if you're drawing belly button to spine. And keep that engagement as much as you can throughout our practice. Come back to center now and we'll change that movement forward and back along the mass. See how it feels if you come a little deeper into the wrists. Maybe that's not for you. Readjust if that doesn't feel right for you in your body. Maybe you can bring the hips a little further back. Come back to center now, and we'll try circles with the hips. Circling forward, back, and around. And generally speaking, you can try inhaling on the way forward and exhaling on the way back. And notice how that feels in the wrists now as we circle, as if we're creating circles with the palm of the hand. We're going from the little finger side across the base of the knuckles, down around the thumb side, and then back of the wrist. See how that feels. The next time you come forward, change the direction of the circles. Notice if there's any different sensations in the wrists, in the knees, in the shoulders and the hips. And feel free to change the position of the hands, the wrists at any stage if you need to. We come back to center now. And we'll take a few rounds of cat-cow. So just be mindful of the lower back. If there's any lower back issues, just keep the, the pelvis nice and steady. It really helps to draw in a little bit more firmly on the lower belly to protect the lower back. As you take an inhale, gently lower the belly, but keep that tone to the abdomen. Lift the breastbone and just lift the gaze as far as the neck allows. As you exhale, press the mat away. Draw the belly in, arching into the back and maybe gazing back towards the thighs. Inhale as you lower the belly, lifting the gaze. Exhale, really articulating the spine, creating space down along the back. Inhaling, lower the belly, lift the gaze, lift the tailbone as well if there's no lower back issues. Exhale, rounding into the back, creating that energy from the crown of the head to the tip of the tailbone. And one more round, just really feeling that openness in the back and the energy creating. Coming back now to tabletop position. If you're still okay to stay on the knees, we're going to walk the hands out in front, keeping the hips stacked over the knees, maybe lowering the forearms down if that's comfortable for you, 
maybe even the forehead or even the nose or maybe you need a, a blanket or a folded blanket or cushion underneath the forehead that's okay for anahatasana heart opening pose breathe into that opening now cross the collarbones into the upper chest maybe even noticing the sensations into the upper arms right down through the armpits come back to those long slow breaths here The next inhale, slowly lift the gaze. Walk the hands back in, center. Just come and kneel up for a little bit here, just to circle out the hips and maybe release out the wrists because we're coming back to a little bit more work on the, on the wrists. Maybe ease out the wrists and circle the hips back the other direction. Any wrist issues coming back down to the mat, maybe change the hand position. But for this round, we're going to plant the right hand in the center of the mat, just below the, the face, and float the left hand up to the ceiling. Maybe turn the gaze to look up at it, if that's comfortable for you. As you exhale, lower the left hand, thread it under, for thread the needle, as if you're going to hover that left hand down to the mat. Just hover off the mat. Inhale, take it all the way back up. And exhale, thread it under. One more of these, inhale, take it up. And exhale, thread that left hand under. And this time, lower the left side of the shoulder, the left side of the face to the mat. And just use that right hand to steady yourself here. You can stay here. Or if it's accessible to you, you might like to try and extend that right leg out to the side. Maybe that left hand can reach the right foot, maybe not, that's okay. Just see how that feels for you. It may not be for you today, that's okay. On the next inhale, take that right foot in, press into the right hand, and come back up to all fours. And we'll take this to the other side. Bring the left hand into the center of the mat, just below your face. And then on an inhale, float the right hand up, maybe following it with your gaze if that. That's comfort for you in your neck. And exhale, thread it underneath, reach it across, hovering that right shoulder off the mat. Inhale, take it up skywards. Exhale, thread it under, just hovering off the mat. Last one, inhale, float it up. And exhale, thread it under. This time, lowering that right shoulder, that right side of the face to the mat, using the left hand to support you. You can stay here, or you might like to try extending out that left foot. It's only if that feels good for you in your body. One more long, slow breath here. And if you have the foot extended, draw it back, press into the left hand, and we'll come back to all fours. From here now, Press into the fingertips and the, the base of the knuckles, engaging our hasta banda. Turn the toes under. And as you exhale, hover the knees off the mat, engaging the core tummy muscles. And then pressing the mat away, lift the hips high. So you're coming into kind of an inverted V. Only if this feels good for you. If this is not comfortable for you at all, or if there's any high blood pressure issues, you might prefer to stay on all fours. We're going to flow from this modified version of Adamukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. You'll notice I have the knees bent here. This is to make sure I can lengthen the spine, keep the spine nice and long. We can alternate bending one knee a little bit more to lengthen the back of one leg and then bending into the opposite knee and opening the back of the other leg. But rather than holding this position for too long, we're going to flow Back to all fours and balasana. So you can flow with me or you can flow in your own time. Draw in and upwards on the lower belly. And on the inhale, lower back down to all fours. As you exhale, release the feet, come back to balasana, child pose. Inhale back to all fours. Exhale to downward facing dog. 
and continue to flow in your own time with your own breath, making whatever adjustments you need to make for whatever might be going on for you in your body today. Always inhaling to all fours as far as possible and exhaling then to either down dog or balasana child pose. You might find you wish to spend an extra breath or two in child pose, or you might prefer to stay in all fours. But if you're staying with me now, the next time you come to Downward Facing Dog, pause here and we'll all move on together. Lift the hips high. Press the mat away as if you're trying to stretch the mat between hands and feet. On the next inhale, lift the gaze towards the hands and step or walk the feet towards the hands or the hands towards the feet. Bring the feet about hip distance apart. Keep that softness, that bend to the knees so you're not causing any strain to the backs of the legs. Inhale for a halfway lift, spine long. Exhale, folding forward and down into full Uttanasana, forward fold. Gently nod the head to say yes, releasing the back of the neck. Side to side to say no. By taking a deep bend into the knees, press the feet into the mat, engage the core tummy muscles, and gradually unfurl. Slowly, gradually coming up to stand as you stack vertebra on vertebra to stand tall at the top of your mass. Great work, lovely. Root down now through all four corners of the feet. Feel that connection between the earth, the ground beneath you, and draw that energy up through your feet and legs. Energize through all the muscles of the legs. Neutral pelvis, tailbone long. Draw in and upwards in the lower belly. Or just keep that gentle connection as if you're trying to draw the belly button to the spine. Visualize a golden thread drawing the crown of the head skywards and then soften and just release those shoulders down as if you're trying to slide the shoulder blades down the back, arms loosely by the sides. Standing tall into dasana, mountain pose. Connecting inwards with your inner strength and stability. Strong and steady as a mountain. On the next inhale, sweep the arms out and up overhead. Maybe gaze to the thumbs if your neck allows for a gentle back bend. Exhale as you soften the knees, fold forward from the hips, fingertips to the floor or to the shin. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the spine. Keep that softness to the knees, particularly if there's any hamstring issues. Exhale, palms down. Step back on the right leg. Reach it back as far as it'll go. Then lower the back knee. Let the toes point back. Steady yourself here, rooting down through the front foot, front knee over ankle. Engage the core tummy muscles and inhale up, rising up, lifting the torso, maybe lifting the arms as well. Root down strongly now through that back knee and shin on the front foot. Make sure you have a good width across the mat. If you have that front knee directly, or front foot directly in front of the back knee, you're more likely to wobble in this position. So as if you're on train tracks here. If it doesn't feel good to have the arms overhead or there's any shoulder issues, you can keep the hands on the hips. Or you might like to try cactus arms. See which arm variation works for you. You'll notice I'm in a kind of a 1990 position here. You might feel an opening on the right hip flexor here. I'd advise maybe just checking in with the hips. If you need to make any micro movements here, if there's anything going on in the hips for you, some of you might like to take a little lunge here, only if that feels good for you in your lower back and it opens a little more into that right hip flexor. Just see how that feels for you. And once you're comfortable here, if you're comfortable here, you can take whatever arm position feels good for you again. Or it might be safer for you to stay with the hips stacked over the knees. So just work with what feels best for you in your body. Or you might like to ease gently in and out 
as I'm doing here. So in cactus arms, as I'm doing now, broaden across the collarbones as if you're squeezing the shoulder blades together. Keep pressing down through the front foot and back knee, lifting up through the crown of the head. Maybe even a gentle back bend if you can lift the gaze comfortably. On the next exhale, lower both hands to the floor now, either side of the front foot. Take the left foot back in line with the front foot. So we're coming into a, a modified all fours or modified plank, bringing the hips forward of the knees. Visualize that your knees are glued to the mat. And you're trying to lift the knees off the mat. So you get that core activation. You can feel it up through your middle. Press the mat away with the hands. Lengthen through the crown of the head. Inhale. And as you exhale, soften into the elbows and release the front body into the mat. Surrender to gravity here. As you lengthen the toes away from you, hug the elbows in by the sides, hands below the shoulders. Draw in on the lower belly, and maybe inhale as you lift head and shoulders, if that feels okay for you, for a gentle cobra, Ujjangasana. Always mindful of the lower back. Exhale down. Inhale back through all fours. You can stay here in all fours, or you might like to curl the toes and lift the hips to downward dog. Hips up and back if you're in down dog. You can stay in all fours either. From here, we're going to float the right leg up high. Exhale, draw the knee into the chest and step it forward. You can help it along as needed. If you're in all fours, you can simply help that right foot forward. Lower the back knee, let the toes point back and inhale, floating the arms up once more. This time we're going to stay in the 90-90 position on this side and bring the hands to heart center. So I'm keeping the hips stacked over the back knee. Three options here for a twist. Maybe just a gentle little movement of the hands towards in the direction of that knee, depending on what feels right for you. Second option is right hand to lower back, left hand to right outer thigh for a little more of a twist. And if you wish to take the deeper version, we'll come back to the hands in prayer. Take that left elbow to the right thigh, the right elbow to the ceiling. So we're really deepening the twist. So this may not be for everyone. See which option works best for you. And for those who are practicing longer, you might like to come a little deeper by curling the back toe under, lift the back knee. So choose whichever twist works best for you. My favorite here is this one, the middle one. Breathe into whichever variation of the twist you're working with. Inhale back to center. Release the hands to the mat either side of the front foot. If the back knee is down, curl the back toe under, lift the back knee. On the next inhale, bring the body weight forward as you float that back leg up and then step it to the top of the mat, feet hip distance apart. Inhale for that halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward and down. Soft knees. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Lovely. And we'll take this to the other side now. Inhale, float the arms up. Gaze to the thumbs if the neck allows. Exhale, soft knees. Fold forward from the hips. Fingertips to the floor or either to the shins for that halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward and down. Float that left leg up now and step it back to the back of the mat. Lower the back knee. Let the toes point back and inhale, rising up. Your choice of arm position. Either arms overhead, cactus arms, or hands on the hips. So hands on the hips is a good way to just check in how the, the pelvis is feeling. You might need little micro movements here. And notice if one side is feeling different compared to the other side. Observe that opening now to the left hip flexor. 
maybe you can lunge a little deeper here into that right thigh. Maybe not. Just see how that feels for you. Ease into it and maybe out of it if it's a little too much. If you still have the hands and cactus arms, broaden across the collarbones. Breathe into that opening of the heart center. Maybe take that gentle little bit of a back bend here, only if that feels comfortable for you in your body. On the next exhale, lower the hands either side of the front foot. Take that right knee back, coming into our modified plank once more. Bringing the hips forward of the knees. Press the mat away. Visualize that the knees are glued to the mat and you're trying to lift them away from it. So you're getting that activation of the core tummy muscles. Lengthen through the crown of the head. So you're not looking back at the knees. You want to keep the spine long. On the next exhale, soften into the elbows and slowly release the front body into the mat. Surrendering to gravity here. Lengthen the toes away from you. Draw in on the lower belly to protect the back. Hug the elbows in as we inhale up, lifting head and shoulders, just coming as high as feels comfortable for you. There should be no pinching or discomfort in the lower back. Keeping the shoulders soft in this cobra pose. Exhale down. Inhale, back through all fours. Curl the toes and lift the hips into our downward dog. Or you can stay in all fours if that works best for you. On the next inhale, floating the left leg up high. Exhale as you draw the knee in and step it forward. Help it along as needed. Lower the back knee, let the toes point back. And inhale as we float the arms up. Keeping the hips stacked over that back knee now, your choice of twist, taking the hands to heart center, first option, just a gentle little pulse or twist with the hands in line with that left knee. Second option, right hand to outer left thigh, left hand to lower back. So you're guiding the twist from your center, ribs and shoulders, but keeping an eye on what's going on in the lower back at the same time. Third option for those who are practicing longer, twisting to the, towards the knee, but bringing that right elbow to the left thigh, the left elbow to the ceiling. So you're getting that twisting action. And then the deeper variation is the higher lunge. If you want to curl the back toe under, lift the back knee. Mind the balance here. Keep focusing on the breath. I'm going to stay with the middle option. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. Releasing back to center, out of the twist. Allow the hands to float down either side of the front foot. Curl the back toe under. Lift the back knee if it's not already lifted. And on the next inhale, float that back leg up and step it to the front of the mat. Feet hip distance apart. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, folding forward and down. Soften into the knees. Inhale as you sweep the arms out and up overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Just take one more vinyasa to bring us down to the floor. And we'll finish shortly. Inhale, floating the arms up. Exhale, soft knees fold forward from the hips, fingertips to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift, spine long. Exhale, palms down. Step back one foot and then the other, maybe coming back into our down dog. Hips up and back, pressing the mat away. Inhale, back through all fours. And exhale, releasing back down to our balasana or child's pose. So finishing maybe as we started, making whatever adjustments you need to make to be fully comfortable in your version of child's pose. Maybe taking that cushion between the hips and the heels. Maybe an extra one below the forearms. Maybe taking the knees a little wider than the hips. And just rest down in this childlike pose. Noticing 
maybe how the heart rate has increased since the first, since we started out in child's pose at the beginning, after the flow through the, through the active part of the class. Come back to the breath. Allow it to soften and to slow down. Noticing the inhale, noticing the exhale, softening inwards, melting downwards. For those of you for whom this may not be comfortable at all, there's another variation you might like to try where you just rest forward on the cushions and rest down, extend the legs back behind. So I just want to, some interference there, I just want to finish with a little quote while you're resting in this childlike pose or child variation that I think is appropriate for today. Nothing can dim the light that shines from within by Maya Angelou. So, when you're ready, slowly ease your way back up, maybe to a kneeling position. And thank you for joining me for this practice. Wish you a very happy International Day of Yoga. Namaste. Thank you, my kid. Background noise. I don't know from where it is coming. It's uh, it's the music. Ah. Okay. If it's okay, it will be very light music. I think it creates actually disturbance, Aparna. So please, if you turn off. Any questions for Mary? Prashant, I have a question for Mary. Yes, Amanda, go ahead. Uh, Mary, first of all, thank you very much. Um, I like doing yoga, but there's a lot there's a lot of poses I can't do because I have osteoarthritis in my wrist and a sore back from typing for like 40 years. <laughs> so um, I'm nervous sometimes about doing yoga classes because they push you into all kinds of poses. Um, but what, um, yours was excellent, it was very gentle. What exercises would you recommend to develop a strong core with lower back issues? A uh, strong core with lower back issues, the cat cow pose that we were doing there. That's a really good one. Yeah. Again, and with the modifications for your wrist, putting a folded blanket or cushions under the wrist, or even using the fist, and you know that'll help to strengthen up the wrist as well. I normally use my knuckles. Yeah, that's really good too. Yeah, there's all those variations. Yeah. But um, and even some of the breathing exercises that Parna was doing earlier are very good for the the core tummy muscles to strengthen the back. So it's working on the core tummy muscles with the cat cow. You're drawing in on the belly as you arch the back, and then you're keeping the tone as you lower the back, but you're keeping that activation of the, of the, of the, of the spine is, is very important. And then there's other, um, have you, it's like a, a yogi bike, it depends on how it would be. See, I'd, I'd need to meet you to know what would be suitable for you and your needs and that uh, yeah. more specifically. Yeah, I, I might I, contact you actually about that. But uh, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to thank you. That was very enjoyable. You know, you're very welcome. We, we, we do have classes that might be suitable for you if you want to check out Breathe Yoga Pilates, our website. Great. Hey, what's the website again, please? Breathe Yoga and Pilates. Um, Breathe yeah. Yoga and Pilates. Okay. <laughs> Thanks uh, very dot, much. Dot IE. <laughs> oh, <laughs> excellent. Thank okay. you. You're welcome.